I, you know, I'm a big fan of my leather danner boots. I've been wearing the leather danner boots for uh, like five, six years now. Uh, these are my new favorite boot. They're not going to be good for this uh, this winter, but they're good for almost all year round, except for the rain. Socrates was an asshole um, and people a lot of people there's one of the great things about the YouTube drinking community is uh, you will eventually learn to communicate well I've watched it happen to people that have been here year after year after year and they become better communicators bone shattering crack In almost all of my jobs, oddly enough, except for being a bike messenger, uh, where communication uh, was, you got paid by how well you could communicate. Um, so you watch, you watch people that said like, that shit was fucking shit, man, shit. You watch those people suddenly become very verbose, very verbally exact, because that's how you make money. But most people don't have that kind of sense of a need for effectiveness. I watch a lot of people, uh, or listen to a lot of people that uh, can't communicate, uh, won't receive any kind of assistance in trying to be understood, and then uh, abandon uh, their course of action. You know, maybe there's a sense of, uh, of not wanting to feel foolish. Like, not wanting to ask, answer a bunch of questions so the person you're talking to could suddenly, could eventually learn what it is you're talking about. You know, what, what is the person trying to communicate, the message, eventually the person listening will eventually figure out what that is after they ask a bunch of questions. And I know for a fact that asking for nouns does not elicit nouns. <laughs> I'm going to need a noun, I used to say, <laughs> before I gave up being a jerk a little bit. Uh, could you put that over there? All right, Socrates was an asshole. Um, Socrates uh, reportedly, um, second-handedly, uh, would ha would ask people questions and bring them to, they themselves would come to the conclusion that Socrates was leading them towards. Uh, I myself love this technique. A lot of times, Someone uh, accuses somebody some, of something, or somebody says, this is the way things happened. Um, and then if you sound like, like you're like, oh, tell me more, elaborate. And if you have them elaborate uh, in a certain order, or about certain things, or, or keep guiding them to certain points, um, it's just wonderful to watch them suddenly realize, wait a minute, I have it completely wrong. Now here's the thing, too, I like about that. Um, is that, or maybe I shouldn't say like, but what I think is important about that is uh, I was not present while this happened. They were not only present, but all the information I have about what was happened there uh, is coming from them. I feel like that, uh, um, that cop movie, uh, the cop TV show, where the, occasionally the police, the investigator would say, just the facts, ma'am. Uh, as, as if they'd immediately be able to go back to a rational uh, uh, dissertation of exactly what happened. Because most people just have a vague idea. Well, not most people. I, actually, I would say roughly about a third of people have a, a basic idea of what's going on around them. Sometimes just a little bit less than basic. Because actually, that's one of the things that I've been noticing a lot lately is uh, a lot of people are fine with not getting what they want. That, to them, that seems ordinary. Uh, which strikes me as bizarre. But I try to imagine a mindset like that. If failure was ordinary, <clears throat> if other people succeeding where you fail, if other people are able to do something but you can't, and that becomes standard operating procedure, so it doesn't... Nothing in your mind would say, I must be able to do this. I'll just observe how that person succeeded and then try to replicate that. Uh, but they don't. It's amazing. Yeah, so somebody has an experience. Just from the way they tell it, I know that it's wrong. 
uh, and I could point out where I think is probably they're wrong, but there's the Socrates is an asshole thing. Uh, if you tell somebody, no, you've, you've made a mistake, it obviously, it can't happen that way, so it must have happened that way. And if it must have happened that way, that's the end result. And you just described, and I could see what the end result is. So, it happened that way. No. You know, but you could lead them to that conclusion. But they're going to think you're a jerk about it. I, had an, I did have an excellent uh, Socratic uh, discussion with somebody recently, and I hardly ever <clears throat> mention recent interactions. As a matter of fact, uh, it's kind of my rule not to, um, but it's so, it's so on topic. So I was talking to a friend of mine, and I said, if you were a woman, would you? And he said, no. And I kind of paused for a second, and he didn't elaborate, and so I continued asking the question, uh, which was, uh, would you walk through a dark parking lot alone? Uh, and then uh, later I was thinking about it, and I'm like, hey, when I said, if you were a woman, would you, and you said no, what was that no for? And he said, I don't see, uh, I don't like to think of myself as a woman. And I'm like, you don't see any kind of value of trying to imagine what, what you would be like as a woman? He's like, no. I'm like, do you want to get married someday? He's like, yes. Do you want to have a baby? He's like, yeah, probably. If you were a woman, would you want to have a baby? No, of course not. <laughs> you know, but what he said was, well, that escalated quickly. <laughs> but that's the value of like trying to, uh, to imagine something through somebody else's perspective, that Socratic method. Not only was I trying to get him to see things using his own, his own mental tools, but I was trying to get him to see things through other people's uh, mental tools. Would you want a big parasite living in your belly? Would you want to have like that kind of a chemical, that organic chemical mix of your body dumping all these things, uh, like like having like a a pharmacy turn upside down inside your body, except you don't know what's in the what's in the pill bottles, and you, uh, your body's just like, well, you're gonna need about six of these, and you're gonna need two of these, and throw a couple yellow ones in there, and voila, you're all feeling weird now, aren't you? Didn't see that coming. Hmm. I do spend a lot of time uh, listening to people, and the, the, actually, this is this is the, uh, though I imagine this is really good. Um, this is I shouldn't this shouldn't sound like a complaint, but I often listen to people, think about what they say, or said, and then repeat it back to them, uh, filling in the blanks of the things they left out, like nouns, for instance. Uh, and I find that this actually su surprises very little people, and only a few people go, "Oh, yeah." <laughs> I forgot to say that. Would you put would you put the shoes over on the shelf against the far wall uh, by the basketball helmets? I don't know. Live TV, folks. I'm not much of a sports guy. I do know that they don't. They tend not to wear helmets in basketball. Um. Oh. Uh, that's another thing about communication, is uh, sometimes you say the wrong thing. That was a good example. Uh, you say you say something that you don't mean, and a, a lot of other people might try to uh, adjust that, try to uh, to like pretend like that. Oh, I, I meant that on purpose, or I meant that as funny, or things like that. And then like, you get even more bogged down in trying to understand, now, is this person being serious? Is this person covering up for embarrassment? Um, you know, like, what, what kind of sense is this? What, and, and then, like, you end, up, you end up trying to do something very, very simple, getting very, very confused, because a lot of times your only idea of what's going on for somebody else is the sounds coming out of their mouth. Oh, you know, the other thing about the Socratic method, method is, I think, what upsets a lot of people is, say someone believes a certain thing, 
and then you lead them using their own answers and logic to a different answer than what they think that they believe in. Uh, they probably just feel that way. Or that they learned it a while ago from somebody else and accepted that as true or facts. Um, but you can guide them with their own reasoning to a different answer. And they resent that in that uh, it must make the questioner uh, seem superior. Um, as if almost that was like an exercise in I'm smarter than you. Um, I could prove my own point using you, uh, the person who doesn't believe my point. Well, that's not the case at all, actually. It's like for, a lot of times for me, it's like um, I do feel an obligation to respond when people are speaking to me. Um, and the outcome, I think, is based on the situation. Like, I'm not trying to, like, well, how can I say this so this guy doesn't feel, you know, offended or, uh, incompetent <laughs> or um, uh, slightly uh, or slightly confused or uh, are just accepting of something you know that they learned a long time ago and haven't re-examined uh, their own facts as things change for them and uh, in life. All right, that's enough of that.